The word predestined is a dirty word to some people. They don't like the idea that God's in charge. They want to be in charge of their own destiny. Well, let's see what the scripture says. Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. God's purpose. For whom he foreknew, those he knew ahead of time, he also predestined, he made it so that it would come to pass. He predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, his son is the Lord Jesus Christ, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, Jesus is the firstborn. Moreover, whom he predestined, he also called, he said, come to me, child. He called by his Holy Spirit, whom he called. These he also justified. They received the faith they needed to believe, and they were justified. Faith is a gift from God, I mean. God's in charge. Faith is a gift from God so that no one may boast. Well, they're justified by the gift of faith that they receive from God. They're justified, they believe, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. Christ Jesus is glorified, and one day we will be as well. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Who are the elect? Well, they're the ones who are foreknown, predestined, called, justified, and ultimately glorified. They're the elect. It is God who justifies. God's the one who does it. God's the one who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen who is even at the right hand of God, who makes intercession for us. So he prays for us. Remember, elsewhere in the scripture, we are told, all who the Father gives to the Son will come to the Son. You mean God's in charge of that too? He decides who's going to come to Jesus? That's what the scripture says. And when you're born again, and you know you are, you understand these things. You understand that God did the whole thing, and you're grateful. But if you want to be in charge, I mean, of your own destiny, good luck with that. If God is for us, then who can be against? He justifies us through Christ, who is risen. He made it so that we would come, we would come to his Son, and taste that he is good. Those he born new, he also predestined. And those he called, he justified. And we can know that all things work together. for us then who can be against he justifies us through Christ who is risen he made it so that we would come we would come to 
his son and taste that he is good. Those he foreknew, he also predestined. And those he called, he justified. And we can know that all things work together when we are called to faith by God. Those he foreknew, he also and those he called, he justified. And we can know that all things work together when we are called to faith by God. If God is for us, then who can be against? He justifies us. He justifies us through Christ who is risen. He made it so that we would come. We would come to his son and taste that he is good. Those he foreknew, he also predestined. And those he called, he justified. And we can know that all things work together when we are called to faith by God. Now, there are some who hold to a doctrine just because you were taught a doctrine and you believe the doctrine and you stand firm on the doctrine and you think you got the right answer. Well, remember, during the time of Jesus, the Pharisees thought they had the right doctrine too and they stood upon it. And Jesus said, you're whitewashed tombs. You don't know anything. You search the scriptures and in them you think you have life. So just because you hold to the correct doctrine doesn't mean you're justified, doesn't mean you're born again. I know some very mean-spirited people who hold fast to the correct doctrine, but they're not filled with the love of God. They're religious. Puh, that's what Jesus is going to do to those who are religious. Spit you out of his mouth because you sicken him. Only those who've been made right in their hearts by God, who've been justified by God. That's why he also says we are to work out our faith, our salvation with fear and trembling. We've got to look inside. Do I, do I look like Jesus? Go to the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Read it. Is that me? Do I, do I look like what Jesus says I'm supposed to look like? It all boils down to, do I know the spirit? Do I know the voice of God? Do I know God? Am I born again? You know when you are. But when you don't know, because you're not, you don't know that you're not. That's the trick. People who are born again know they're born again. People who are not born again have no clue because they're just religious. They haven't tasted yet that the Lord is good. They don't know any better. And it doesn't mean that they're not gonna to come to a saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Doesn't mean they're not going to. I would venture to say that most in the church probably will come to saving faith in Christ, but the church is full of people who follow a doctrine, taught to them by man, and they can get behind that doctrine and say, yeah, that's the right doctrine. And they can be using that doctrine to slam other people against the wall because they've got the right doctrine, but they don't know the Lord. They're the ones who give Christianity a bad name. But nevertheless, all who the Father gives to the Son will come to the Son Everybody who's going to be saved is going to be saved. That's a promise. And 
At one point, all of us who are born again, we're not. At one point, each of us was maybe religious, maybe just a unbeliever walking around, no care in the world for anything of God. Maybe even antagonistic, totally working for the enemy, maybe. But everybody who's been born again has a pre-Christ story. What I was like before Christ and what I'm like now that I belong to him. So work it out. Do you have a pre-Christ story? Have you been changed? The veil has to come off. I mean, if the veil's still on, you're not going to hear it. You're not even going to hear the words I'm speaking. You're not even going to understand what I'm saying. We worship in spirit and in truth. God is spirit. His words are spirit. You're not going to understand. Not with the spiritual understanding. You're going to hear what I say and like, maybe think it applies to you. Maybe not. I mean, you will have no clue what I'm talking about. Until you know the spirit. But if you are one of the ones God foreknew, who's predestined, who's going to be called, who's being called. I mean, if you're listening to my song, God said, everybody who hears my music is going to be saved. So if you just sat through that song, I believe you're going to be saved. Is that boasting of me? Is that me thinking I'm more highly than I am? Nope. That's me believing what God says. And God said that to me. Everybody who hears your music, Tara, is going to be saved. So I believe him. Maybe you're being called right now. In the day you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Say yes, God, and see what happens. I remember the days when I would have said, yeah, I'm a Christian, but I was not born again. All right, God bless you.